What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. In this video, I'm gonna show you some data that is honestly gonna blow your mind about how stock market crashes don't bother dividend investors and why some people actually look forward to them. So if you love dividend investing, then please slam the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. As always, don't take what I say as financial advice, as this is for entertainment only. Now, I did an entire video on reasons why dividend investors don't fear stock market crashes, but I didn't show you the math behind it, and a good way I can do that is by using my Portfolio Growth Simulator tool, which is one of the many tools in my Best Dividend Stock Spreadsheet Portfolio Tracker 2.0. This tool estimates how a dividend portfolio would grow, quarter by quarter, for up to 60 years, based on the input parameters you put in, like starting portfolio value, dividend yield, dividend CAGR, and how much you are contributing to it, amongst other things. So in this example, I set the starting portfolio value at $10,000. Then I set the portfolio's average weighted dividend CAGR at 7.5%, which is a reasonable percentage. Most dividend portfolios I've looked at range between 4% to 10%. My portfolio fluctuates around 8% for reference. If you didn't have my dividend tracker tool to calculate your portfolio's average weighted dividend CAGR, then you could just look up each of your stocks on Seeking Alpha and use that data to then calculate your weighted average. For example, Seeking Alpha says that Microsoft has a 9.24% five-year dividend CAGR, which just means that for every year over the last five years, they increase their dividend by another 9.24%. So year one, they increased it by 9.24%, and then in year two, they increased the previous raise by another 9.24%, and then in year three, etc. i.e. it's compounding. A more conservative stock like J&J &J has a 5.96% five-year dividend CAGR. Once you have all your dividend CAGRs for each stock in your portfolio, then you calculate your portfolio's weighted average dividend CAGR, which just means that your larger positions will impact the average more than your smaller positions. Keep in mind that it's a low likelihood that any stock would be able to consecutively raise their dividend for 60 years at a high CAGR like a 10% rate, but I did a video where I showed you some multi-decade dividend compound annual growth rates for all the dividend kings, and many had over a 10% rate. That doesn't guarantee they'll be able to continue at that rate going forward, of course. Then the next input field in the tool is your portfolio's average weighted dividend yield, and in this example I put in 3.5%. I'd say most of the dividend portfolios I've looked at are in the 3% to 6% range in terms of average weighted portfolio yield. My dividend portfolio is conservative and fluctuates around a starting yield of 3.5%. Then there are a couple of other input fields. The first is quarterly share price increase, which is how much you estimate your portfolio will appreciate each quarter in terms of stock prices. A simple rule of thumb is that the stock market goes up around 10% a year, which is roughly 2.5% per quarter. But you can be more conservative and put in 1% a quarter, or more aggressive and put in 3% per quarter, or whatever you want. And in a sec I'll show you how changing that stock price appreciation percentage will impact both how much estimated dividends you get each year as well as your total portfolio value. The final input field is for how much cash you want to add to your portfolio to buy more shares each quarter. So you can set it at $0 if you want to model a portfolio's growth where you aren't adding any more cash to it and are just letting the dividends reinvest as stock prices go up. Or you could put in any contribution amount, let's say $300 a quarter, which is similar to saying $100 a month since there are three months and a quarter. Then directly below those input fields are some automatically generated summary results to show you how your example portfolio would grow every 10 years based on your input parameters. And then below that summary section are hundreds of dynamically generated rows showing quarter by quarter portfolio growth over 60 years. Note I didn't model tax or inflation, but the purpose of this tool is just meant to give you a flavor for how things would look. Now I'll show you my portfolio simulator tool with a real time example, and then I'll switch to a different spreadsheet I created which has the results of three different portfolios I simulated, growing in bull markets and in bear markets. So here we are in the tool, and the input parameters go up here, and then the results are down here. I will zoom in and then we can look at some of these results later. So it starts with year one and it kind of scrolls down all the way to year 60. Let's zoom in. So for example, we can just look at the summary values up here. Right now we have a $8,000 portfolio with a 10% dividend CAGR and a 3% yield. You could ignore share price, it just uses that for some calculations. And then the quarterly share price increase of 2.5%, which is about 10% a year, and this assumes $100 of quarterly cash is added, invested into the portfolio. You can see how these things are. So let's say if you wanted to see what a 7% CAGR, everything just automatically updates. Or let's say if you wanted to add in you know, $300 a quarter, and maybe it's a 4% yield. And all these things change dynamically like that. And if you scroll 
out a little bit that you can see, okay, in each quarter, year by year, how did things evolve? So the green is just every five years I highlight it and the yellow is every year. So you can see the portfolio value, how the share price would change based on the input parameters you had, how the quarterly dividend increased based on the CAGR, how much gets paid with the drip and your annual passive income. So it's super handy and fun to play around with these different values. Ten percent CAGR, maybe a twelve thousand dollar portfolio, and a four point two percent yield. And you can see what all it does. Okay, now I'll show you the results of three example dividend portfolios I modeled with my tool in different market conditions. The first three rows in white are the results of simulations from the first portfolio. Then the next three rows are the results from the second portfolio, which I highlighted in yellow just to distinguish it from the other two portfolios. And the bottom three rows are from the third portfolio, which I highlighted in gray. The first portfolio has a 3% yield and a 6% dividend CAGR. The second portfolio has a 5% yield and a 5% dividend CAGR. So that's a portfolio with a higher starting yield, which usually means a lower dividend CAGR. And the third portfolio has a 2% yield, 8% dividend CAGR. So that's a very low starting yield, but a slightly higher dividend CAGR portfolio. Note, I just picked a few example yields and CAGRs for these portfolios. I didn't try to engineer the numbers or use certain percentages to fabricate a point. Okay, each portfolio has three rows of simulated growth data in them. The first row in each portfolio represents a terrible stock market that remains horrible for decades, i.e. one with 0% stock appreciation, on average, for over 50 years, which is kind of unrealistic, but I did it to highlight how a dividend snowball might do in atrocious stock market conditions that last literally for decades, i.e. market crashes are so severe and repeated that for over 50 years the market ends up at the same spot it started at. We did have one period of time in the USA where it took us multiple decades to recover from a crash. So in 1929 the Dow hit 380. Then we had the Great Depression where the Dow fell down to the low 40s. Yes, you heard me right. The Dow, which is almost at 35,000 today, was in the 40s about 90 years ago. It took until 1954 to get back to the old Dow peak before the Great Depression, i.e. it took around 25 years. Now there is usually nuance in data, and in this case it's important to understand that after the depression was a huge period of deflation. For example, the consumer price index in 1936 was more than 18% lower than it was in 1929, thus stating market returns without accounting for deflation exaggerates the decline in terms of actual buying power. But you get my point. The market has shown that it can literally be decades where it's effectively negative or flat, so while it's unrealistic to show zero stock appreciation for 50 years, I think it's still possible. And if you really want your mind blown, the dividend yield of the overall stock market was almost 14% when the Dow hit its low in 1932. Imagine that. Right now the Dow has around a 1.8% average dividend yield. Of course, very few people had cash to invest during the Great Depression to get that yummy 14% starting yield. Anyways, continuing on. The second row in each portfolio section shows what a dividend portfolio would do in a weak market, aka one which averages 5% stock appreciation per year over multiple decades. The third and final row for each portfolio section represents how the portfolio would grow in a normal market, i.e. 10% per year stock appreciation over multiple decades. So let's look at the results. If the markets were terrible and remained flat for decades, then the 3% yield 6% CAGR portfolio, which starts by making $300 in dividends a year, would be making $714 in dividends per year at year 10, $2,481 a year at year 20, $14,435 a year at year 30, an insane $208,109 a year at year 40, and then an unbelievable $14 million of dividends a year by year 50. Implausible? Yes. Probable? No. Possible? Yes. I can't wait for someone who doesn't practice good listening skills to leave me a comment saying something like, that's never gonna happen, so I can die a little on the inside. So of course the odds of the stock market going effectively sideways for decades are quite slim, but this unlikely scenario helps illustrate why dividend investors and dividend snowballs love crappy markets, which is because as your dividends reinvest, you can buy more shares at cheap prices, and each time you buy more shares then you can buy even more shares the next quarter, and the compounding madness grows like crazy. In terms of total portfolio value, we see that at year 30 the total portfolio value would be at 88.8 grand, at year 40 it jumps up to a monstrous 715 grand, and then at year 50 it would be at almost 28 million dollars. All that from a little old 10 grand portfolio with no more contributions being made to it. 
Okay, now someone else can leave me a comment about how they can't possibly wait 50 years to be making tons of passive dividend income from a 10k portfolio, so I can fully die on the inside. Now let's look at what that 3% yield, 6% dividend CAGR portfolio does in terms of annual dividend income in a stock market that appreciates 5% per year for decades, which is the second row in the top section. At year 10 we see it's making 666 evil dollars a year in dividends rather than $714 if the market had stayed flat. So as we learned, as the stock market goes up, the relative amount that your dividend snowball grows is decreased. That's why people prefer stock buybacks when stocks are cheap, because the money you invest goes much further when prices are low than when they're high. At year 20, Portfolio 1 would be making $1,658 a year in dividends as compared to $2,481 a year in a flat market. Jumping to year 50, we see that we would be making $30,845 in dividends a year, which is significantly less than the $14 million of dividends a year in the crappy market. And then we see a total portfolio value at 675 grand, which is surprising when you compare that to the unlikely fact that the annual dividend income at year 50 in the flat stock market is 14 million a year. Again, how is that possible? And I'll restate it to make sure it sinks in. It's because the power of a dividend snowball buying more shares at lower prices compounds to crazy amounts. So lower prices means more and faster compounding, which is why dividend snowballs love stock crashes. And that amazing example is one of the reasons why dividend investors aren't worried about market crashes, as long as they're in quality companies and they are reinvesting their dividends. So the stock market might crash 90% tomorrow, but you will see your dividend snowball grow way, way, way faster than it did before the crash, and if that doesn't bring a smile to your face, then I don't know what will. The neat thing is that dividend investors also smile in bull markets because they see their total portfolio value going up, which gives them more financial power and flexibility. Thus, if you're a dividend investor, you better be smiling every day in every market condition because you win regardless of what the overall market does. As Michael Scott says, win, win, win. And don't forget, you need to play to win. Now, winning isn't guaranteed, even for dividend investors, because there could always be some crazy market edge case like zombies taking over the earth, resulting in a complete financial meltdown or something. But my point is that very little should bother you over the long run if you're investing in a basket of diverse quality companies. Now let's look at the third row, which is a market that is appreciating 10% per year on average, which is basically the S&P 500's average. At year 10 we see it's making $633 a year in dividends, which is the lowest of those scenarios. At year 20 it would be making $1,341 a year in dividends rather than $2,481 a year in the flat market. Jumping to year 50, we see that if the stock market was going up 10% a year, then Portfolio 1's dividends would be making $9,761 a year versus the insane $14 million a year we'd be making in a crappy flat market. Now let's look at total portfolio value. We see that for the first 40 years, the total portfolio values for Portfolio 1 operating in normal market conditions are all higher than the bear market total portfolio values, but at year 50 the bear market blows it away because of the insane compounding of the dividend snowball that happens in the final years. And you can see that in markets that have a mediocre 5% return on average for 50 years that you'll end up with the lowest portfolio value. But all those returns are great in my book, considering you're doing nothing and it all sprang from a 10 grand portfolio, which is another reason I love the low stress passive income from dividend investing. Basically you do well in crappy markets, you do well in good markets, and you do well in mediocre markets. Again you have taxes and inflation and blah 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 to deal with, but you get the point. Now let's look at the second portfolio's returns, i.e. the one at 5% yield and 5% dividend CAGR, one that has a higher starting yield but a lower dividend growth rate than Portfolio 1. Here we see similar patterns as the previous portfolio, i.e. the most dividends come during periods of the weakest markets since that's when your drip can buy the most shares. We can also see how the dividends being generated for decades due to a decent CAGR and a higher starting yield outperform Portfolio 1. The same is true for the total portfolio values in Portfolio 2 relative to Portfolio 1. And now let's look at Portfolio 3, i.e. the 2% yield, 8% CAGR 1, which will show us that the more time goes on, the more powerful CAGR acts as nitrous. We see that in a flat market, it takes us until year 30 before a 2% yield, 8% dividend CAGR portfolio overtakes a 3% yield, 6% CAGR portfolio in terms of dividends per year. Or it takes us until year 50 for it to overtake a 5%, 5% portfolio. If we look at total portfolio values, we see it takes portfolio 3 until year 40 to have a higher total portfolio value in the flat market relative to portfolio 1, or year 50 for it to pass portfolio 2. I think the most realistic markets to use when estimating are the 10% ones, but who knows, some experts predict the next decade will be down and flat, aka another lost decade. If that happens, then I'll be really grateful that I'm a dividend investor. Feel free to take a screenshot of this and look at the numbers in depth to see what other interesting patterns you might find. Bottom line, it's really fun and motivating playing around with different values in my Portfolio Growth Simulator tool to see how things could shake out over 60 years. 
Again, I want to reiterate that maintaining a high CAGR for decades gets less and less likely, and please don't draw too broad of conclusions based on those simulations. My goal is to get you to think about things as you move forward down that wonderful dividend investing journey you're on. Think about what your goals are and what your timeframes are, and use all that to mold your portfolios to enable what you need to give you the best chance of achieving the outcomes you want. Remember, it's all about owning quality companies so that your portfolio can remain sustainable over the decades. Thus, don't be lulled into having a super high yield portfolio filled with crappier companies, as then odds are that you won't be able to see dividend growth or stock price appreciation growth for decades on end. Speaking of portfolios, M1 currently has an account referral bonus of $30 if you open an account per their requirements. The way it works is you click on my M1 referral link in the description of this video and then either open a brokerage account and fund it with $100 or open a retirement account and fund it with $500, deposits which need to happen within 30 days of you opening the account. Then you need to keep your initial deposit inside the new account for 30 days from the date of deposit to get however much they're offering. Now I'd like to shout out my latest YouTube subscribers who have signed up to support me on Patreon.com and are supporting me at the Aristocrat tier. So thank you Michael G, thank you Raiders2773, and thank you Ty Stephen Hill Dog. As Patreon aristocrats, they gain access to my dividend portfolio tracker spreadsheet tool, along with they gain access to multiple private channels on my Discord, including one where I let people watch my videos before I release them to the public, as well as I often let you vote on which thumbnails I use for my new videos. If you made it to this point in the video, I ask you to please slam that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. And don't forget to join my free dividend Discord, a place where thousands of dividend investors hang out and chat. Thanks for watching and hitting the thumbs up button. Stay positive and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.